Anyway, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Um, this is the um, Sunday before, or the Sunday before Pentecost. Pentecost will be next Sunday. So today is the day that we think about what the Ascension means. So we'll be talking about that today. Actually, Ascension Day was Thursday this week. But this is the Sunday we sort of focus on the Ascension text, and we'll talk about that. This is also the Sunday where we will have a blessing for, for those people who will be going off to college. So Caroline will be going to state, and, and Carol will be going to uh, Chapel Hill, which is <laughs> yin and yang, I guess. <laughs> so, the, the, um, and so we will be sending them off as they, they begin their time in school. So we um, will have that opportunity. The reason I'm running a little late is we're having a little trouble with our video stuff. So the way we're handling it is we're using the old system. So to all those folks on Facebook, we're sorry. <laughs> we're sorry. This is the best we can do for literally the last few minutes. So I apologize for being late. We also want to let everybody know if this is the first opportunity to worship it here. We don't think of uh, visitors and members, we just think of who the Holy Spirit has brought to this moment and at this time. So we welcome you, we welcome everybody to this time. Um, with that said, um, if it's your first time here, everything you need is printed right in front of you, just follow right along. Also, we have um, alcohol and gluten-free alternatives to the Eucharist if that is something that you need. Not a whole lot of announcements. One is, is that it's with some sadness that we will be saying goodbye to our dear Betty. Betty Thomas, who, uh, who died in such a whirlwind week. Wednesday. Wednesday, right? She died on Wednesday. Um, and the service will be today at 4. Visitation will be here at the church at 3. Um, so all are welcome to come be part of that. Um, and yes, it's a it's a sad thing. It, we, Betty is beloved, and, and as we say goodbye to Betty. Um, as far as the week to come, I know it's just a regular week. We have our regular periphery study and stuff like that. Is there any announcements? Oh yes. Oh oh yeah. Uh, um, Kim's Kimberly's. Father, I'm trying to be careful with last names, uh, died. Um, uh, 
<laughs> Things are jumping out of my head. Floyd Moore. Yeah, what? Floyd Moore. Floyd Moore, is that his? Yeah, Floyd Moore. So we keep keep her in our prayers during that time of loss. Thank you for coming back. Anything else? If not, let us focus our hearts and minds as with our hand and bell prelude as we prepare to come into all those prayers. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our life, and our salvation. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing life of God. God of grace and glory. You have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shattered by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. In the light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washing away sin, restores innocence to the fallen. Cast out hate, brings peace and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sin by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. you.
it's okay. The Holy Spirit's going to come and then we'll be okay. That's sometimes hard, right? Doesn't it sometimes feel like, yeah, but I feel so alone. But there's a promise there. The promise is, is that Jesus is not God. Jesus is just with us as the Holy Spirit. But there's always the now what question in life, right? And when you're young, that comes at you quicker and quicker and quicker. You know, like, now what do I do? Um, we got two people that's about to go off to college, to go to university. And, and guess what they're asking themselves? Now what do I do? What did it feel like your first day in middle school? What is this going to be like? Now what is this going to be, right? One day you're going to maybe start families. And guess what you're going to ask yourself? Now what do I do? And sometimes when we have a loss, when we feel alone, we ask those questions. But you know what we hear all through the story? We are not alone in those now what do we do questions. Does that make sense? It feels sometimes we feel alone, but God reminds us you, you are not alone in the now what. You ever had that now what moment? Now what do I do? Um, and the good news is the angels tell us you are not alone. God is with you. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day of the Ascension where we learn about how you are with us in a very special way through the person of the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, let us always know that you are close to us when we are not sure what we're going to do next. We pray all of these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you guys very much. Sing to God, sing praise to God's name, and draw the one who Christ flags. I am in that hand, rejoice with the Lord God. In your holy habitation, O oh God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. He is a solitary in the home, and bring forth the sins of the freedom, but the rebels shall live in the midst of the 
of God when you went forth before your people and you marched through the wilderness. The earth cradled, and the stars were not rain, in the presence of God, the God of the Son, in the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people abound in your home. In your, in your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You are in the heavens, God, and the nations of heaven. You sing for your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in the holy place, God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Let us see God. The second reading is from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad about and shout for joy when the glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary death prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfastly in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may be glorified, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that you may know, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me, gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made you known to those whom you gave me from the world, and they were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking you on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because you they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to them, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
So um, there is, ascension is just not something we seem to focus a lot on. I think we have this sense that, that um, Jesus was in the world, Jesus did a lot of good things, Jesus comes back from the dead, Jesus ascends into heaven, and we just have to somehow figure it out until Jesus comes back. I don't think we give a lot of thought into what Jesus' ascension means. And it's not, I think we think ascend means to be away. But it, in both of these texts, in the John text and the Acts text, it's not really what they're saying. It's God is going to be with us in a different way. Almost an important way. There's an importance to the ascension that I don't think we take a lot. We, we think a lot about Easter and resurrection, and we're still in the Easter season. We don't think about what is this time that we're living? And why is it important? I, I think we have the, again, back in those days, everything was great because Jesus was here. And when the day, the great day, not morning comes, it's going to be great. But now we're just muddling along until we get to that point. Neither one of those texts say that. And it's okay for us to think that because it's exactly in the Acts text, Jesus is like, okay, you can ask me one thing, and what's the first thing they ask? When's the kingdom going to be established? And what does Jesus go to say? Well, you can ask me anything but that. Right? Don't ask me that. I don't know what that is. You don't know what that is. It's not the point. The point is the now love. Who are you now? Who are we now? It's interesting that in the Gospel of John, there is no resurrection story. As a matter of our ascension story, as a matter of fact, the only ascension story we get in Luke part two, that's Acts. But the ascension is all through the Gospel of John. It's all, Jesus is always talking of him from the 14th chapter all the way into the 17th chapter is talking about going away and when I go away the ascension is always there. Remember in the Gospel of John crucifixion, burial resurrection, ascension are almost like one event and the ascension is an important piece so what's the last thing on Jesus' mind before his death? So who's the, who are the, who, what's the last thing he's, can, after this long farewell discourse, what's the last thing he does? He prays to the Father, for the people who have been following him. You know that I have not lost any of them, it's basically the elect, he's talking about the disciples. But, but who are the disciples in the Gospels? Who, who are the disciples? They are the church. It's the last thing on Jesus' mind before Jesus' departure is those who trust him. Those who believe in him. And it's real interesting that in the Gospel of John that you notice what eternal life is. It is not something hoped for. It's not something earned. It's not something that maybe, just maybe, you know, if you do it right. Eternal life is not a future hope. What is eternal life? Go back and look at the text. Those who trust me, those who believe me, have eternal life. So if you're sitting here, right here, right now, if you woke up in a world where you have no obligation to come to church, and you came to church, or if you're sitting in your kitchen or living room or whatever, watching this on Facebook, that's you. Eternal life is not could be, maybe, or maybe will be. Eternal life is right here, right now. The kingdom is right here, right now. It's not something we wait for or hope for. It's something we live. It's, it's, we are people of eternal life. Do we die? Yes, we die. 
but death has lost its sting. Eternal life is not something to hope for. It's something to see and possess and to have. It is ultimately what gives us our very definition and meaning of who, of who we are. We are followers of Jesus Christ, and therefore we are God's children. Jesus talks like a parent. They, they are yours, and you gave them to me, and they are mine, and now I'm giving them back to you. It's like children. That's who we are. We are not hoping for eternal life. We are living eternal life. When I stand before a family that I'm going to do, Betty's family and, and the family of first who will be here, I am not, I'm not preaching to someone who's dead. Will there be a body in the room? Yes, there will be a body in the room. But who am I preaching to? I am preaching to the living, and that includes Betty. Betty's fine. But ultimately, who are we? Because every time we lose somebody from this community, we are different. When we lose somebody like Betty, and I can tell you, when I, why am I? Because she sat right there. Sat right there. <clears throat> No more cars with stickers in it for just no reason. Just she sort of thought maybe Pastor Matt needs a car. Nobody who was always grateful and thankful and kind. I'm not preaching to Betty who is dead because Betty is not. She rests in our Lord's care. Who am I preaching to? I'm preaching to a community that no longer has her presence. And what do we ask ourselves? Now who are we? Without her. But that, and that happens all the time in the life of this community. Think of the matriarchs and the patriarchs that we have buried, and that we have changed. And we have looked to heaven going, now what? We're about to take two young women who are taking the very first pretty big step, mamas, cover your ears, pretty big steps out of the house. This is the beginning of the end of that time in their lives when mom and dad take care of them. This is the beginning to take care of themselves. It's I think about a young Matt who, just by the skin of his teeth, got in Appalachian State, right? And, and I thought, I thought, how am I going to get through this? And I thought about what's the world going to be like? And if I thought high school was hard, Lord, this is going to be harder. Right? And I looked at heaven. And you know what I was thinking? Now what? Now what? Uh, how many of those phases in lives have we felt? And, and the reason we're going to take these young women and we're going to bless them is we are going to remind them something as they go to their new homes and educations. And as they wonder what the world is going to be like. And, and they're going to face college is so much fun. I loved it. I mean, it, it really defined who I was. As a matter of fact, that's where I fell in love and got married. But it was also hard and painful. And when I made a mistake, I had to figure it out on my own. Right? What do we say to them? Why do we give them shawls and blankets that we made? And why do we give them stuff? Why do we give them cards? What are we saying to them as they go out, as they go to Raleigh and Chapel Hill? We, we are with you. You are not alone. We, the people,
people are first, are with you. But more important, you are young women of eternal life. God is with you. God is close to you. God is present. This is sort of their first time to feel that. But how, as we get older, how many of these changes have come at us? As our bodies get older, as our, as our, oh, we're Tracy and I, we FaceTime our boys who are 10 hours away up north. And you know what? It's just Tracy and I and the cat, and you know what we ask ourselves? Well, now what? <laughs> Right? What about those of you who have lost spouses? What about those who have lost family? These are the preached people that I preach to at a funeral. Life is different. Life is always changing. But guess what you are? As children of God, guess what you are? You are people of eternity. Right? You are people of eternity. The worst thing that can happen to you is that you can die. And guess what? That's not the worst thing. Right? You are eternal. That is not a future hope. That is a present reality. Does it hurt when we Bad things happen? Sure it does. Is it rapturous when good things happen? Yes, it is. But you are people of eternity. Get your head around that. You live in eternity. That's not something to hope for. It's something you possess. But Jesus says it this very morning. That's who you are. Now let's go meet those people. Amen.
people through our baptism in Christ, living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he will live again. He has risen to the dead and is seated at the right hand. He will come again and be judged as a living in heaven. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. Be seated. Then Tara and Caroline come forward. So the first thing is, you just have to promise to stay friends. That's just, <laughs> just have to be that clear. <laughs> just anyway, um, so this blessing and what blessing means. Blessing does not mean you're going to get nice stuff, even though it could be. I don't know. But blessing means where God is when we. Take this moment. We want to send you to Raleigh and we want to send you to Chapel Hill with the understanding that not only is God with you, but God has gone before you there. You're going to change in ways that will be wonderful and marvelous, and we look forward to seeing that. But we also know that you're growing and leading, and we mourn that a little bit too, particularly your parents. Not to um, we, we also, you know, we, we know that that's your adults. Um, so we want to send you off knowing that God is with you. So if we could stand and if they want to come forward to light hands and we can do our, we can bless them. Continue to learn and grow. Dear Lord, remind them that your presence is near, that there will be hard times and there'll be good times, and we'll be in both. Dear Lord, give them patience, give them hearts of kindness, give them wills to learn and to know more, and dear Lord, help them grow into the women you have called them to be. We pray all of these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now, get your basket. <laughs> we made sure you had enough, enough uh, washing. Now, go off to school. <laughs> United in hope, enjoy the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our companion, you promise to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering, and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Yes, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. 
You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed. And speak truth to power through your prophets. We especially continue to pray for Ukraine. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You hold us in loving, in your loving care. We pray for mothers and father figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of their mother, and mothers who have lost their child. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Nurturing Lord, you send us spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone, and to all who are sick or grieving. We especially pray for Kevin and Dan, Bishop Tim and his wife Wendy, and the Senate staff, Ronnie and Laura, Luetta, Roy and Grace, Vicki, Lee, Willie Ruth, Pauletta, and Ann. Be with all those on our prayer list, for those who we name solidly in our hearts, or for those we now name aloud. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, you raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give thanks for our newest saints, Betty Thomas and Floyd Lord and all your saints who have given us a glimpse of your redeeming love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also Lord, with you. Show and share our peace.
generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of earth. In the breaking of this bread, you build to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out the service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
to address you as our Abba as we pray. <laughs> Thank you. 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gift of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
blessed one. Jai Shri. All of you. I'm so glad you could come. Oh, I was happy to be there. Thanks for having us. I want to get another picture. I'm sorry. I'm at a critical point where I'm trying to get out of this picture. Uh, it sounded like all the all my favorite people were there. So I left it. I love stuff like that. How to fit right in. <laughs> Next time. Thank you. 